Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and today we're going to look at tax incidence, or who carries the burden of a tax, and how that relates to price elasticity of demand and price elasticity of supply. Our applied example will be uh, cigarettes, particularly in the United States. And uh, if we look at a recent example, February 4th, 2009, under the Obama administration, we have the Children's Health Insurance Program Reauthorization Act. And this act sought to increase taxes on cigarettes to raise federal tax revenue so that the federal government could match funds to states to provide health insurance to families with children. And these are families that did not qualify for Medicaid. So this was a program to capture those families with children to ensure that these children, along with their families, um, had access to health care in the United States. What was the increase? Well, the increase was fairly significant. We can see that it went from 39 cents per pack to a dollar and one cents per pack. So that's a quite significant increase. And with it came criticism and uh, people highlighting um, some of their academic studies relating to elasticity to highlight what the potential revenue gain could be or loss. So we can see here that according to Nobel Prize winning economist Gary Becker, who has studied the long run impacts of price elasticity of cigarettes, he calculated that the uh, increase in price would be, I guess in the long run, about 13.3%, uh, leaving a decrease in the quiet demand by 10.6%. So here we can see that the percent change in price, greater than the percent change in quiet demanded, uh, in terms of its decrease, thus meaning that the demand curve is inelastic. Um, other critics, here we see the National Tax Foundation, calculated that um, that instead of perhaps generating more revenue, that states could actually lose revenue by about a billion dollars, billion dollars of lost revenue for states as a result of that increase in the tax. Perhaps the increase in the tax uh, would force cigarette smokers to uh, reduce their consumption of other goods and thus reduce the sales tax by the state for that amount. That, that's an assumption I'm making. You can research that more if you're interested. Um, in terms of the effectiveness, uh, we do know that increased taxes are effective in terms of reducing teenage smoking. Here we see a statistic highlighting that, highlighting that for every 10% increase in price in the price of a cigarette, <laughs> in the price of a pack of cigarettes, uh, teenage smoking uh, falls by 7%, all right, which is significant. And that's a result of teenagers not working full time, being sensitive to an increase in price, uh, not having enough disposable income to um, absorb the increase in the price as a result of a tax increase. Some critics of the policy of this 2009 sales tax highlighted that it would impact negatively lower income families, uh, and this tax would be regressive. So here we can look at the statistic here, very important, that the higher cigarette taxes may be financially hurting lower income smokers rather than, rather than making them more likely to quit. And in a survey of 13,000 people in the state of New York, lower income smokers spent about almost a quarter, 23.6% of their total income on cigarettes leaving just three quarters for the other necessities and uh, luxuries. That compares to just 2% of higher income New York residents. So the higher the income, the lower the tax um, to that person. In this case, we see 2%. And so for the lower income families, the tax rises and it becomes a significant portion of their total income. And that's what we call a regressive tax. So how can we graph this and see the tax burden? Well, here we have a graph illustrating the market for cigarettes, right? And we have an inelastic demand curve. We know that the PED for cigarettes is less than one, which again, we want to remember that the percent change in price is going to be greater than the percent decrease in the quantity demanded. And here we have a fairly elastic supply curve, where PES is greater than 1. Here we can state that the percent change in price 
will be less than the percent change in the quantity supplied. All right. Now, in terms of comparing these two, we can see that the PED value is going to be less than the PES value. Now, this is an important point. I want to highlight this. When we compare the elasticity of the two curves, whichever curve is more inelastic, which in this case is the demand curve, will carry the burden of the tax. So here we see that since the PED is less than PES, the consumer of cigarettes will carry the tax burden. All right, and that's what we mean by tax incidence. Who is carrying the burden of the tax? The consumer in this case will carry the burden of the tax. Okay. All right, tax incidence, we're looking at who's carrying the burden. So let's first illustrate what is the equilibrium. So here we have, let's say that's point A, and we'll illustrate the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity before the tax is imposed. Okay, so here we'll label that PE, price equilibrium, and quantity QE, quantity equilibrium. We have S1 equal D1, it's allocatively efficient because the marginal cost equals marginal benefit, et cetera, and um, everything is good. Then the, uh, let's say the 2009 tax on cigarettes is applied, raising the price, again, we can see, from 39 cents to $1.01 .01 per pack. All right, significant increase in the, uh, price of the tax. So we'll have the supply curve shift out by that amount in, and we'll assume that. Okay. So here we'll have supply curve shifting out in parallel by the amount of that $1.01 tax. So here we go to S2, which equals S1 plus the value of the tax. Okay. And that sets a new equilibrium right over here. So let's go ahead and label that. Right here we're at point B, and that's going to set a reduced quantity right at, let's say, quantity tax, and it will raise the price to consumers to this point here. Okay? So this is the price paid by the consumer. We can see that the increase in the price, the distance between PE and PC, is greater than the decrease in the quantity um, uh, demanded that has fallen. All right, again, that uh, highlighting that the change in price is greater than the change in the quantity demanded. Now, what does the producer receive? What uh, amount of revenue do they receive? Well, they charge the consumer PC, but they subtract the tax. I'm just going to leave them this amount here. So let's go ahead and label that. All right, so we'll call this P and P for price received by the producer. The consumer pays this price, the dollar and one cent is subtracted and whatever's left over is given to the tobacco producer. Okay, so let's go ahead and label a few areas to help us with this analysis. Let's say this is A. Let's go ahead and continue the uh, lines here. I'll continue this over here, continue this over here, so we can label. So that's A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Okay? Let's make a few notes. All right, so consumer surplus, all right, consumer surplus before, I should say before, sorry, is uh, equal to areas A, B, C, and D, right? Areas A plus B plus C plus D, A, B, C, D, all right? We can highlight that. Right, we're coming down, we're going along our demand curve to the price in the free market, going all the way up, et cetera, probably goes off 
let's say to infinity, and this triangular area is the consumer surplus. Okay, so areas A, B, C, D. The consumer surplus after after the tax is applied is reduced just to area A. All right, so it's a significant decrease in the consumer surplus. They have lost areas B, C, and D. Okay? Um, in terms of the producer surplus, producer surplus before the tax was equal to areas E, F, and G, right? E plus F plus G. Okay, just to highlight that, we can see, all right, it is this area here. We follow the supply curve, the cost of production up to the free market equilibrium price. And here we see that triangular area. And then the producer surplus after the tax is just equal to area G, right? So a reduction in the surplus for producers. A welfare loss is created, right? We have a welfare loss, which is equal to areas D and F, D plus F. D is the lost consumer surplus, and F is the lost producer surplus. So the sum of the two is the welfare loss. Great, so what are we left with? We're left with the tax revenue. And this is what we want to pay particular attention to. All right, so the tax revenue is equal to the tax, which is PC minus PP, multiplied by the quantity of units, which is this area here, BC and E. Areas B plus C plus E, which is equal to PC minus PP, multiplied by the number of units, which in this case is the quantity with the tax, okay? Now, if we look at that area, we highlight that the tax revenue, this rectangular area, we can notice um, or divide it into who is carrying the burden of the tax, which one, the, the consumer or the producer, which one is providing uh, more of or, or carrying a, a bigger portion of the burden of the tax. And we can see that clearly it's the consumer. The consumer is really carrying a, that significant burden of the tax. Since they've lost areas B and C, that's money that they could have used to spend on other things, other necessities or luxuries that has been sacrificed in order to provide revenue towards the government. Um, area E is the producer burden, which is very small because they have the more elastic curve compared to the demand curve. So we can see that as a result, the consumer carries the tax burden, which in this case is equal to areas B plus C versus the producer, right? The producer's, the producer's burden of the tax is just equal to area E, all right? And since B plus C is greater than area E, uh, the consumer carries that burden. Again, because the PED value is less than the PES value, right? So whichever curve is more inelastic, they will carry the burden. So the consumer has an inelastic demand curve, so they are carrying the burden of the tax, which in this case is areas B and C, okay? And I'll just color um, the producer surplus a different uh, color, just to highlight how different it is from the consumer burden. So here we see the theory, and we also see how that relates to this statement at the bottom. In this study, in the state of New York, how again, consumers carry the burden of the tax. Uh, low income families carrying 23.6% of their total income being dedicated towards cigarettes versus uh, higher income uh, individuals. So in this case, cigarettes, yes, they're inelastic, but this is 
if this is the market for cigarettes for low income families, we would see that these consumers are carrying a significant burden of the tax. And that's it. Um, hopefully you found this interesting and take this into consideration as you develop future policies for uh, your papers with the new IB economic course. Even though the tax incidents isn't part of the syllabus, it's something to take into account and something you might see in university. Thank you so much and don't forget to comment, subscribe and to like.